I think if there's one thing that's really clear, if you look at comics, it's that fans want to connect with creators. And by and large, creators like connecting with fans. Take out all the drama and the, the arguments and the fights and the trolling and all that other stuff. And you just get down to the basics. Almost, and there have been some exceptions. I mean, John Byrne definitely comes to mind. Almost all creators like talking to fans. They enjoy it. It's, it's uh, and, and not in a, I'm the master, you're the, you know, the pupil kind of way, but just kind of, you know, talking about something they love. So how can we make more of that? Hey everybody, this is Perch, and this is going to be some commentary, some advice, I think. And, and I'll hit the advice part first, and it, because it's simple and straightforward. Um, if you're a creator and you're looking to do a crowdfunded book, or you're looking to do something independent, or you're starting out at Marvel, or whatever you happen to be, um, find a way to connect with your fans. And what I mean by that is, you know, and start slow, so you make sure you know what you're, you know, you're doing, you don't cause yourself anxiety or troubles. But even the act of setting a Patreon, if, if you could do Patreon, you could set it at zero dollars or you can actually start a YouTube channel and you can make comments. Although I think you may have to be at a thousand subs to do that. I don't know. YouTube's crazy rules. But find a way where you can post things. I mean, look at like I think Greg Pack is the one who on uh, I think Tumblr was would post little blogs. I may have this completely wrong, but but Bendis has done it. Uh, many different creators have done this where they just post kind of one way communication. Here's what's going on. And while a lot really feel like they have to structure it, like here's some important knowledge for the comic industry or here's something I'm doing, what a lot of them find is even short little paragraphs like, hey, I was walking in the park today and I got this idea for, you know, a new space comic and it seemed pretty interesting, uh, you know, kind of kind of horror, kind of sci-fi, but I'm, I'm thinking about what to do with it. Even very simple kind of thoughts like that. Uh, readers like it's it's a peek into the inside of what's going on with some of the people that create and work on some of the characters that mean the most to them and in many cases that's enough if you do that you establish this bond with fans it's powerful it's important but here's the trick a lot of people then feel they need to go a little bit further they need to post more of their thoughts or they need to respond to everything that the fans say in a lot of cases that's not necessary Yes, some fans will ask questions, and some fans will get irritated if you don't answer those questions, but by and large, most just are happy to read and consume. When I say most, I mean like 95% or more of them. They're, they're not looking for two-way conversation. They're just looking for extra detail. Maybe they really like the comic that you're currently writing or drawing, and they just want to feel a little bit closer to it. They want to learn more. I'm always amazed um, artists, uh, and, and very few have done this, have created a an Instagram or you know any kind of little account and post up the scribbles, the garbage, the stuff that gets thrown away. Not your finished pencils, not anything fancy, just very, very rough sketches. People eat that up. They really like it. And it bonds you. Uh, it, it bonds the two together and you find that, that people will follow you from project to project. If you're coming up in comics right now, it's a really clever thing to do. But again, be careful. Because when you go further and you start engaging in that two-way conversation, I mean, it might be good. And, and for a couple people, it will be good. But the more you feed into it, you start to tip over the line of, hey, this is some cool, like almost director's commentary-like stuff into a world of uh, now you're arguing with people about, you know, if Chick-fil-A is an offensive restaurant or not, or you, you just find yourself getting into really bizarre things. And this, by the way, is not a, a video to say, hey, you, you shouldn't talk politics. You, you could do whatever you want. It's just the more you feed into it, the more you find your time, your energy, your life, your emotions are going to feed into it. It's amazing to watch what happens to somebody who is creative and just kind of on about their day. And one minute they're having a good conversation, you know, just talking about uh, comics or a fun pitch they had. And the next minute, they're down and depressed and angry and, and shaky because somebody called them some kind of crazy harassing name online and then they argued and then they saw that the person who harassed them got like five likes to their harassing post and it just, it turns the whole thing sour. So don't start it in the first place is the answer. Um, it, 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 it It's funny because it's one of those things that's a double-edged sword where if you do just a little bit of it, it's hugely valuable to your project and your 
career and, and everything else. But very, very quickly, it can tip into a real mess where now you are, you're having the weirdest fight ever and it's, it's impacting your emotion. You can't get out of your head and it's just ugly. And in some cases, and here's where it's even worse, sometimes the person you're talking to feels the same way. They're not like, I, I think a lot of people picture that the person on the other end of the screen is this evil troll, troll that's just intending to screw with you. And sometimes that's the case. But in most times, it's somebody who either misinterpreted what you said or they're having a bad day for something else. I mean, I, I saw this, uh, this, this video once somebody had put together where the guy was driving and he gets cut off. Not, not major, just a little bit cut off. And he gets angry. And he goes into the grocery store and he's grumpy. And the person says, have a nice day. And the guy didn't say anything. He just kind of walks out pissed. And he doesn't even yell or he's just, just angry. And the person who said, have a nice day, feels like they were slapped because they weren't having the best day. And so they're, they're feeling, oh, my God, now somebody is, uh, is upset at me. And it all sounds so petty when you say it like this. But when you're living it, it has a way of just taking over. And so if you think about this chain of events and, and then the, per, you know, the person working the grocery store goes home, fires up Twitter, sees, uh, I mean, pick your name, pick, pick, uh, you know, Marjorie Bennett and says, I hate your comic. And, and Bennett's looking at this going, what the, what the hell, you know, how did this happen? And they're getting angry. I mean, this chain of events can happen so rapidly. So the, the conclusion to all this, by the way, is don't avoid social media. Just in your mind, get very clear about the value and the cost of what you're doing. And the value is, you know, you're putting some material out. And, and here's, here's an interesting thing, I think, to say just to brace yourself with. Expect a couple, you know, take a cold and clinical approach almost to what you're doing. Schedule it out. Put some distance between yourself and the emotion. So one of the tools you can use in Twitter is you can actually schedule out your tweets. And if you do that and you just, you know, schedule out like two weeks worth of here's some sketches and you just, you know, one a day, out they go. And like clockwork at 2 p.m., out it, out it is. Um, you, it, it will feel cold and clinical to you. It won't feel right. It won't feel organic. It won't feel like you're having a conversation. It won't feel like anything. But your fans will come to rely on it. They'll enjoy it. And yes, you will get some people who are like, well, how come you never reply to me? Or you'll get some people who respond to your, you know, You'll post up a sketch of uh, Wonder Woman and somebody will be like, oh, there you are drawing a girl. You bent the knee. And it's like you just got to kind of ignore uh, just just brace yourself to ignore all of that. Ignore, you know, the goods and the bads and, and the request for more. Just just hit that mechanical schedule for a little while. Get it going. What you're doing is you're establishing a muscle in your own mind of how to kind of feed content out on a regular basis and establish that connection without sinking yourself emotionally into it. And by the way, there's some people on this video right now, I'm sure who are listening is going, ah, yeah, pussy, you know, you put yourself emotionally into it. Bah, ah, ah, you know, and that sounds all good, but emotions come at you when you do not expect them. It's not like you're just, uh, you know, some weepy, crazy person, too sensitive, a uh, snowflake, whatever word you want to use. It's, it's simply that, you know, life comes at you in all directions all the time. And you don't always know what you're going to get. And so these random kind of events can come in and make you more rational, less rational. And you see it. You're like I, I post things at various times. And sometimes I'm, you know, more zen state. And sometimes I'm more pissy. And sometimes I sound more defeated in videos. And other times not. And there's something going on in my life. Always. Like all of us. The trick is to create some buffers for yourself so you get the benefit of that professional career, that connection with fans, that growing of your audience without getting sucked into the emotional roller coaster of it. And, and again, it's, it's goods and bads. You know, a lot of people are quick to point out, ah, oh, you deal with trolls that are coming, coming at you, attacking you. That's the bads, and that's, that's not good, sure. But the goods can be equally draining. When you get somebody to come in and then you're talking about, you know, something really nice and you get excited about and all the rest, it still can deviate you from your work. It can still suck you into something you didn't necessarily intend. So start clinical, start robotic and put this stuff out. One thing that's interesting in, in my view is that um, and doing this stuff on YouTube, I, it strikes me that you can make videos, you can put stuff up. I don't do many live streams. I'll do more of them, but I, I don't do many. I'm mostly they're one way. I love the comments by and large, you know, every now and then, and, and it, it's always with the more dramatic elements. And I don't want to stop covering those because there are things to talk about. So I'll keep doing it. 
But on the ones that are dealing with kind of more drama type topics, um, I get really great comments and I get really great emails. And I, I wouldn't trade that for the world. I like engaging with it from time to time and I come in and do that. Uh, but I find that it's very easy for myself to post a comment to this channel or post a video. And if I'm feeling bad or down or, or you know, there's, I'm, I'm struggling with something at work, whatever else, I can just let the videos roll. I can put that distance kind of between myself and everything else going on. I don't run the risk of coming online and being a crazy asshole like, like so many do. I think if, if you're an editor right now or you work for the big two, I would recommend, I would, in fact, I would even type it out, make a little program for yourself. Here's a good way to build value for the comic, build value for yourself, and kind of get the ball rolling. So create a social media account, put some things up in it, you know, a little profile pic, a little button, or all the rest. Don't get into a bunch of weird descriptions in your, in your be playful. In my Twitter account, it says I'm the head writer for the Perch Twitter account. I, 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 for whatever reason, I find that funny. Nobody else, I think, even knows it exists. But anyway, uh, I, just be kind of lightly playful with it and just pick a month or, or the first four weeks and use a scheduler, use some third-party tool or use Twitter uh, ads or whatever it happens to be and schedule out your tweets and schedule out some basic things about here's, uh, I'm going to post a page day of my script after the comics come out, of course. I'm going to post a page a day of some art that I've done and just commit to two to, two to four weeks where this is going to happen without you doing anything else on this account. Just roll it. And see what happens at the end of the four weeks. How many followers do you have? How much engagement has you had? How many, and what kind of comments? You may even want to go as far as schedule this stuff out and then close it and don't look at it again for four weeks. Just get this thing moving. I think if, if you're coming into this new and you're trying to just establish the connection between yourself and your fans, it's a great way to go about it. It's a great way to build your, your, your audience and your reputation and kind of this attachment without falling into a pit of just weirdness, which right now, social media is a minefield of crazy crap that you, 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 everybody wants to believe they're smart enough to avoid, but you're not. Nobody is. It's, it will come at you fast. And it's just, it, it, it puts you on the right foot. Once you've established that, when you start to engage in, you've set a pace and a reputation. You've set a model for yourself and the people who are reading that this is what you're going to get. And it, it just, it will, it will distract, uh, it will distract any kind of nonsense really effectively. And the best part about it is it's easy. You can spend one and a half to two hours a day scheduling out a bunch of stuff on your social media account that will go a month. You, you basically have provided a month's worth of kind of entertainment engagement for like an hour and a half of your time. And now you can use, you know, the, that all, all that free time to watch Netflix or, you know, uh, buy dynamite variant covers and take them into the bathroom with you, whatever it happens to be, whatever, you, whatever you're into, no, no judgment, whatever you want. It's, it's all good. Anyway, consider it. It's an easy way to promote yourself, to keep yourself from getting into craziness and just, yeah, have a good time. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Um, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Follow me on social media where I schedule everything out. No, I don't. I do try and engage. Um, but most importantly, thanks for listening.